I kind of felt like her, like, all right, take me to the war now. It's time for war time. <laughs> anomaly. I am an anomaly. Anomaly. I am an anomaly. Oh, anomaly. 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 Something that deviates from what is standard, normal, or expected. An oddity, peculiarity, irregularity, inconsistency, incongruity, a rarity. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Anomaly Podcast. My name is Jen, my headphones are my tiara, and I am an anomaly. My name is Angela, and I created a TNG Wonder Woman crossover, and I am an anomaly. Welcome to the podcast, people. (laughs) Hi, everyone. We're so excited. It's finally here, the Wonder Woman movie. (laughs) And we went last Thursday, or this Thursday. We went opening day. I think that's the first time since Rogue One. Yeah. That we've gone to an opening movie together. We did. It was. And it was so good. We did have our seats were like super close, which I don't usually do. Uh, but it was fine. It was good. And we went to Alamo because we like to go to Alamo Draft House for stuff. I get. Do you just want to jump in? Sure. Well, we'll do a non-spoiler review. Take five minutes to do that so that, right. that the people who haven't heard it yet or seen it yet will not be spoiled. Okay. That sounds good. I think... The review I put up from Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> comparing all the DC movies and Wonder Woman at the top at 95%, you know, mm-hmm. whatever their rating is, the rating system is 95% for Wonder Woman. I think that was conservative. It was so good. It blew all my expectations out of the water. I thought it was spectacular. I loved it. I thought it was super good and I did love it, but I don't know that I was like, I don't want to like downplay it or anything because I definitely loved it. I mean, I did love it, but I don't know that it was like the best thing I've ever seen. I mean, maybe comparatively to the other stuff that they've done, it is well, good. Compared I don't... To the, I, well, compared to the three DC movies, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Like it, and they are showing it up against the like right. three or four, like the newest Batman versus Superman, right. Man of Steel, and okay. Suicide Squad. I think I this was Suicide like Suicide Squad. I definitely think it was better than Suicide Squad, but yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I no, feel I bad think- because you are very excited, and it's not that I'm not excited. I just feel like, like <laughs> I didn't, it's not like it was flawless. Like it was amazing and it was great, but it wasn't flawless, but it was really good and enjoyable, you know? And I feel funny. Okay, you know what it is? What? It's because so people were so hard on Suicide Squad that. When we went, after we went to it, I I felt like I had to defend it, you know, because it was like, I felt like it was getting a bad rap for being worse than it really was. And I feel like this is almost the opposite where everyone is raving about it so much that I feel like I have to manage expectations. Like it is awesome, but it's not like, I don't know how to explain it. I, it's weird because you're going in because everybody's like, oh my God, best thing I've ever seen. I just read this thing where... Lupita, I cannot say her name. She's in Star Wars and she's in the new one of the new Marvels. And she came out and said, This is this movie is a gift from the gods. And I'm like, that's great, but like that's a very high bar. <laughs> well, this can I explain why I think it's as good as I think it is? Sure, sure, yes. It remained true to Wonder Woman as a character. Uh, she stayed strong throughout, had a good message about, you know, what she really thinks is worth fighting for. Sure. And um, how she did it. I just loved all of that to the point that maybe whatever flaws you're referring to, I was blinded by how awesome the character was and how right. true they remained to her and just the overall feeling of the movie. So yes. I may not have seen any flaws because of that, but I just think that it, this is the kind of movie that you would want to take your little girl to see. Oh, or little yes. boys. I can't wait to take Aaron to see it. He's going to love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're but, we're going. I'm taking my family next week. Um, but yeah, no, I, I feel bad because it's not. I don't want to give the impression that I didn't absolutely love it. It was a remarkable movie, especially considering DC's efforts in the past. And I absolutely love Wonder Woman. And also Gal Gadot completely grew on me. She nailed it. I I very much 
you know, I'm in now. Like I was kind of back and forth and I wasn't sure, but I really, I feel like it worked. Um, I feel like the setting was very cool. Um, I, I liked her costume. I liked yeah. that, how they did it. Cause I didn't think it was too sexy, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it was very much a warrior outfit. It still was Wonder Woman. I feel like that was awesome. And then I love a good dark haired superhero. I can't, can't lie about that. Love, lo- always loved Wonder Woman cause she looked like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that, that's always been cool. And I do like Chris Pine. I thought he was very good. He was. And I also enjoyed the, because this is in the preview, so it's not a spoiler, the Etta Candy character. Yes, Etta Candy? there wasn't enough Etta Candy. There That's was not the enough of her, but she was... to say negative. She was fabulous. <laughs> she was great. And I, I agree. I mean, I'm hoping that they use more of her um, as, you know, if they do another Wonder Woman. So mm-hmm. that would be cool. And yeah. Yeah. So, and, and why I would the setting, they... The, this movie is killing it in the box office. So oh, yeah. I don't think that they're going to stop with just this one. Oh, right. right yeah. Right. And yeah, it was totally awesome. I really did love it. I think it was just more, I'm not really responding to the movie as much as I am responding to all of the gushing that I've seen and just making sure that people's expectations are managed. You know what I think it is? I think it's relief. I think it's because we were so relieved that it was good that it yeah. was awesome and that it, <laughs> it it was a female superhero for once, you know, that was the center, the focus. Yeah. And we have been waiting for so long for a Wonder Woman movie because remember they were going to do one and then they killed it. Yeah. We, it was up in the air. Were they going to do one at all? And there was right. so much anticipation for this. And I, I think with every trailer that we saw, we got more and more excited because we could see that. Kind of where it was coming from. Yeah, where it was yeah. coming from. And that Wonder Woman was going to be different. You know, mm-hmm. the same Wonder Woman we loved, but at the Alamo Draft House, they show kind of clips related to the film you're about to watch that are, sometimes they're vintage, like segments mm-hmm. from um, cartoons or something cartoons or TV shows or whatever. They showed a bunch of clips leading up to the film about Wonder Woman, and some of them were from a couple of um, failed pilots or mm-hmm. made-for-TV movies or whatever. And and we know from, from our discussion on Wonder Woman a few months ago that the original vision of who Wonder Woman was became corrupted over time. Mm-hmm. Slowly, they took away her power. You know, she became a glorified secretary in the the Justice League and all this stuff. But in this movie, I think the relief that all of her power is back, you know, and she is who she was originally meant to be. Mm -hmm. And it's just a hopeful movie, I think. That's that's really it for me. I'll stop gushing. <laughs> no, and I don't I I'm sorry. I feel bad cuz I feel like in a way like I I think if we would have if I would have gone first, I probably would have not been as cynical to you. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I really kind of went in I as far as the non-spoiler review, I definitely read recommend it. I'm going to probably see it two or three more times, I, I'm sure, because yeah. my mom wants to see it and Russell and Jim want to see it. So, like, I'm definitely recommending this movie. It is amazing, awesome. It's fun. I like the World War One setting. I know that that's yeah. been something that people have poo-pooed about, that she was created, you know, in World War II and she was fighting Nazis, but this is something different. And I think it was okay. I think it was good because it kind of, I think that was a good way for them to kind of disconnect themselves from and and kind of start a new story. You know? Yeah, I agree. And not only that, but it would remind you too much probably of Captain America. Right. And I'm sorry, Germans, you're always the bad guy. And that's not right. <laughs> but in well, all but the if movies, you do stories, the bad guys. If you do or, the or stories. Or the English are bad guys too. But. Well, yeah, that's that's true. And maybe in other countries, and I'm sure Americans are bad guys, so it's okay. We're evil capitalist scum. So, <laughs> um, anyway, but but no, I definitely did love it, and I just love Wonder Woman so much. It definitely gave me feelings. I had to feel feelings when I was watching it. But I thought everyone was really good, and and she and she was very good in the action sequ- sequences and music and all that stuff. So, and there's yeah. no post credit scene. No, no, you don't have to sit around forever. There nope. isn't any. No, yeah, we'll do that favor for you. So. Yeah. If you want to leave the theater right away, you can. So, are you ready? I am. Let's do the spoilery <laughs> stuff. All right. Shields up. Red alert. Spoilers decloaking off the starboard bow. Um, yeah, that was a warning. Okay. All right. 
So this is the part where we ruin everything for you. So if you haven't seen the movie, you've had your warning. You have. You You have had your warning. The first thing (laughs) is that because it takes place, it's a flashback, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you know anything about Wonder Woman, it really doesn't spoil. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't feel like there was any large revelation like the Darth Vader is Luke's father thing. I mean, right. that, there's nothing like that that happens because it kind of begins and ends in exactly the same place. Except I don't remember in our research for the Wonder Woman discussion we had a few months ago that she was the god killer. Right. Well, but that may just be something because, okay, because and you did more research than I did, but isn't there different versions of her origin? I mean, it's always been yeah, there, there sort are of a couple of them. It's always been related to the different. Greek to the Greek gods. It's always been related to that, and and the island and all of that was kind of in a mystical on a mystical plane, sort of mm-hmm. or protected. And so she has always been related or some sort of demigod, right? Yeah. But I, so, I think that where she comes from, like she, wa- I don't think she is the daughter of Zeus, you know. In the well, comic. but in this, in yeah, this, in this one, version, she, it, she is. now she yeah. is. So like that's now established. So the, this is what I was thinking though is that uh-huh. to get your brain around it, there was a point in the movie when I realized that if this is the Avengers, she's not Black Widow. She's Thor. Yeah. So as far as this cinematic universe is concerned. Wonder Woman's Thor, right? Mm-hmm. So it starts off on the island, and she's a little girl. I liked the origin stuff with her on the island, and I I know that you don't think I'm telling the truth, but I did know that she was the god killer. I know that you didn't believe me. <laughs> I don't think... I, I just meant... But it's because the mom work, was being but... so weird, and, and then after that happened where she was able to defend herself the way she was, and everyone kind of freaked out a little bit, like... Like, everybody, be cool, be cool. It seems like everyone knew but her, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they and said so, that she could never learn who she really was. Right. But I felt like the beginning was too long. I feel like, because it's a t- it's over two hours. It's two hours and 20 minutes, I think, is the running time. And I really do, did enjoy, you know, the female power thing they got going on. And Robin Wright, who I did not recognize, is the general of the army. and is the one who trains her and stuff. But I felt like that whole thing, like the whole beginning of them on the island to me could have been condensed just a little. It was just like before, you know, it just took too long to me to get kind of to the main action. And then I also didn't, I didn't really get a good idea of like how they got in there in the first place. Like they just happened upon it. No, Zeus put them, He they said that Zeus protected their them on the island from, um, from the outside Ares. world. But then how did no, Steve from get there? Huh? From Aries. So then how, yeah. I mean, I guess like... Well, it seems like some sort of veil. Like right. they, some sort the of Hogwarts. camouflage. Yeah, and they just kind of stumbled through it. Okay, so it is physically there, obviously. Yeah. There was yeah. just... And then they are... And the other thing, and this is funny because I think in a way we needed to do this probably earlier. <laughs> because now I've had time to think. I was so excited after the movie. Um, <laughs> well, maybe that's And I think that's thing. the way... What? Maybe that's not a bad thing. Cause, well, oh, maybe you're right. There's maybe been a few right. movies where we were super excited, and then afterwards we're like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't well, that great. But that doesn't take away the initial excitement and enjoyment of right. the movie. Okay, so anyway, I don't understand why the Germans, just like you come across something that's obviously not of this world, and you just keep shooting? Like, what What if this is important? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what if, I don't know, I don't know, the the logic of that, was weird to me, but the whole but point is that they were shooting that, at them. That's true. They were. They were. They were. Well, they were defending themselves. Yes. But and I get that. I get that. But anyway, so it's it is interesting. Uh, I did like all the stuff with uh, with Steve it was cute, and her just sort of being very innocent, and you know, in the in the beginning, and innocent did, but wise. In sure, in some I'm ways. talking like she, more. Right. Yeah, uh, innocent of of their world, like babies right. and um, cars and things like that. But mm-hmm. but knowledgeable about other things, <laughs> like when he's talking about going to bed, you know, sleeping with her, and she's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, please, I already know. I know right. all about that procreation right. thing." Yeah, I've read all the how many volumes? 
<laughs> oh, gosh. 12 volumes. <laughs> that was funny. That, I think that was when I went to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, I had you go. missed that part. It was the beer. I had to have beer. <laughs> no, but I, w- I went early because, you know, I mean, there's always something. But I, I vaguely remember that. I vaguely, I remember them talking about it because it was right when they went, went on the boat, right? They were talking about yeah. it on the boat. Yeah, and you, um, I think you also missed the part where he stood up in the bath. Did you see that Oh, part? I saw that. I saw that part. Oh, okay. I saw that part. Yeah, that was, that was nice. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad. Well, and it's weird though because it's like I did think it was kind of gratuitous, though. Yeah, as stupid it's kind as of similar sounds. to the the blonde in Star Trek. What yes. Was, which one was it? I can't Don't remember which one. It's the one we it, didn't like. <laughs> well, I like that actress, and I like the the character ends up being Kirk's wife, like in the other timeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, I know what you're talking about, but you're right. It is like the opposite. It's the opposite. It was, and it was kind of gratuitous, especially if you consider that the only other sexual part was barely a kiss and a come hither look. That's true. I, so that's why to me it kind of felt gratuitous. Now, I am not going to complain about seeing Chris Pine in all of his glory. Not at all. Absolutely not. And there's no full frontal. You don't actually see anything, but there's definitely very little is left to the imagination mm-hmm. in that scene. But it just doesn't seem like. I don't know. I just felt like it was kind of gratuitous. Is that so silly? It's like the opposite because you always see, oh, here's a naked woman. But you're right. It's exactly the same. We did make a big deal out of that scene in, in Star Trek. Into yeah, darkness. It's into and darkness. It wasn't that bad. I like the whole, I mean, well, that's another story. So you can listen to our show about that. <laughs> but it was a little gratuitous considering the rest of the movie didn't really have anything like that. I think that that's true. It was a little off balance, I guess, mm-hmm. because like the the one uh, romantic scene, yeah, was left to your imagination very much, which is is fine. But yeah. yeah, it was a little off kilter. But it was a funny scene. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny, and yeah. it was cute. You know, I mean, it's it's whatever. But to me, that was one of those scenes. It was they were still on the island where I was like, okay, let's get to the, the thing. <laughs> it's time to get to the war. I kind of felt like her. Like, all right, take me to the war now. <laughs> It's time for war time. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I found interesting was the plot points. So you have kind of the real world plot point, and then you also have the the God's plot point kind of happening at the same time. So you have the real world is it's World War One, and they're about to negotiate a treaty, but there's these kind of supervillains trying to get in the way. Um, Dr. Something, Dr. Poison, maybe. And... I kind of want to know more of her story where she her face was all messed up and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't, like, I, I was kind of curious what was going on. Kind of felt like general grievous. Like, you just don't, it's like this interesting premise and you don't get any more information. <laughs> I think that she represented what war does to people. Okay, that's And what fair. Ares did to humanity. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what her purpose was. Right. So anyway, so that so she's trying to create, you know, they're they're trying to create some super weapon, some poison weapon that's going to you know, turn the war in the favor of, of the bad guys. And then on another level, Wonder Woman, you know, the whole premise is that Ares has done this to people, made them evil or made them fight each other, and that she has to go kill Ares. That's her mission. And and this all the stuff going on between all the stuff going on between the two sides the bad, good guys and bad guys, German and allies or however you want to say it, that's kind of secondary to her. She's just trying to get to Aries, like wherever the battle is like the worst, you know, she mm-hmm. feels like that's what she needs to do. And I thought that was kind of cool. I like that premise. You know what I mean? I like the idea that, that Steve had this one goal because this idea of like, okay, you're going to go kill Aries. Like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I guess, you know, as long as it helps. But, but that she was, was very fixated on on that. I thought that was kind of a neat way to spin it, I guess. And then it also made sense when she was able to just fight her way through. Um, I I admit that it was probably the the margarita talking, but right at the scene, the scene when they're in the trenches, and she sees the the woman with the baby, and they're talking to her about you know, how the, it's no man's land scene. And, and basically she's like, screw this. <laughs> and she like takes her hair down and throws off her coat. And she's like, 
I don't have time. <laughs> I'm just going to go. And, and uh, it's weird. And I probably read too much into it. But this is one of the parts that I loved the most because it's like she gets up and she starts taking fire. And I don't know, like I for some reason, like the mental picture to me was just like this catharsis of what it feels like to be a woman and a mom and a and a leader. Like nobody else is going to do this. So I am going to take care of it. And then just how I don't know, like this tank. Do you know what I mean? And then she goes in and just starts kicking ass. And that's the thing is that. All, there's so much of this like feminist idea or non-feminist idea like wrapped up in Wonder Woman that it's really hard to see the forest for the trees. And I feel like this moment is awesome because she shows how strong she is. She can take care of herself. She can be a leader. But she was motivated by being a protector. Her motivation was not just in that moment with that one woman or that one baby, but it's just like, I'm here. I was sent here to protect all of humanity. And here's this little microcosm and this mother and this baby and something needs to happen and I'm going to do it. I'm just going to fix it. And I, I don't know. I felt very, do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. (laughs) In fact, I told Dave that that scene was very poignant to me as well. Mm -hmm. Because here these guys were telling her, no, you don't understand. We've been here for months and months. We progress a few inches and they push us back and it's just impossible. We can't even do it. And she's like, watch me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get this done. You'll see. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's so hard to balance that I think they were able to balance is she's not just a singular badass. It's not just about, well, I'm a woman hero because I'm acting like a man hero. She still maintains who she is as a person, I feel like they struck a balance of that. That was, that's something I have been wanting to communicate in life forever. (laughs) You know, like there is a way to maintain all the parts of yourself. It's hard. It's so hard, but it's possible to be both a woman and a fighter. Yes. And not lose either. The parts of the movie that, that illustrate that best is when she um, saw the chil- the babies and the mom with the with mm-hmm. the child, and mm-hmm. and and it was nice to see that that was included, you know, and that she could have sympathy or be excited by a baby or uh, or or feel well, sympathy other... for a mother and a child. That motivated her to get out of the trench, right. you know, and forget what they were trying to tell her and just well. Do and it, it. and the thing is, is I didn't feel like, and I, you said this to to a point too, but when she made that decision. She didn't say, screw you guys, really. She didn't say, I'm going to do this myself. I don't care what you say. She was just like, trust me. Yeah. Trust me. I can do, I, and it's, it wasn't like a dismissive. She wasn't being dismissive of them. She was just saying, I don't know. Like, I, I really like how that occurred because she didn't dismiss them outright or tell them they were idiots. She was just like, okay, this is why I'm here you have to trust me. And then it all happened. You know, it wasn't really a, I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't her shedding them or telling them to go away. It was her just pushing through. When she did that, the men were like, oh my gosh, we're getting shown up by a woman. They were more like, yeah, let's go. Let's, you've got to support. Let's go. Let's do this. You know, they were like a team. Yes. That's what I liked. I did, too. I did, too. And there were other scenes where that kind of happens, like in the Parliament, you know, when when they threw a fit about a woman being in there. She didn't even make a big deal out of it. Yeah. She kind of just went in there, whether they liked it or not. Like, what? (laughs) What? This is a problem? It wasn't wasn't a defiant thing. It was just, oh, oh, what? (laughs) Yeah, it didn't. She wasn't trying to make any sort of statement. She's just being herself and not allowing them to stop her from being herself. And she even went up to the general and shamed him for allowing his soldiers to die that way and not being at their side. Yes, I love that. I agree. So to the other storyline, the whole time you think that Ares is one dude who's working with the poison lady. And then... Uh, Dr. Poison? Mm-hmm. Right. And so you think it's one dude, and then it that does not end up being the case. Ares is actually who? 
Professor Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because David Thewlis in like every movie except for Harry Potter is always a bad guy. And I was so, there was a moment when he was like with Etta and I just thought to myself, please don't end up being the bad guy. Please don't end up being the bad guy. (laughs) And, and I thought we were clear. Like I thought we had gotten to a certain point of the movie and I was like, well, if he was really the bad guy, then, you know, it would have come up by now. And then just when I thought, because it was too anticlimactic when she killed the other dude It was too anticlimactic, and I was like, oh, no. (laughs) And then then there he comes out of the shadows, and I'm like, dude, no, he can't be the bad guy again. He's just kind of a poor guy. He's just always good. But I must say, though, that when he actually kind of took his god form or whatever, that was, I mean, at least he was kind of like a really kick-ass bad guy, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really definitely went, it was a little Lord of the Rings for me. The costume? Well, just that whole image, all the imagery with him and the fire, the flames and the and the and his costume actually was very Sauron ish. Don't you think it was? I mean, like and then that one image where the flames go around him like Mm -hmm. literally looks exactly like the eye. I mean, I mean, like it, it wasn't even subtle like that looked almost exactly like the eye of Sauron. But in that same vein, Sauron's a huge badass. So. If you're going to go evil, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> oh, man. I enjoyed the fact that at the end, after she defeated him, mm-hmm. that she was surprised that the war was still Oh, defeated going the other on. guy. It was, no, that was when she defeated the other guy. Okay. Because everybody started being cooler after she defeated Ares. But I don't think he's gone. I think he's still... Coming Mm -hmm. back. I think he's going to be an arch nemesis that keeps coming back. And also, I I was doing some research on Dr. Poison. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Poison, and and you even said this, I love that the villain is a woman. Mm -hmm. So I think if they do another film, it'll probably take place in the 40s and Dr. Poison will be older and in that, you know, in that movie I don't know. I don't know that they'll do another film that's flashback. I think they're just going to continue because she's in Justice League. Yeah. And but if they continue do mo- doing movies that are just Wonder Woman, oh, that's they true. might take place in the past. Because, yeah. of course, why would they introduce Etta Candy for a heartbeat? And she's so awesome. And we don't she's see, so It's awesome. kind of like Captain Phasma, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think they're probably going to continue, you know, with another storyline oh, that I takes hope place so. in the past. But I, I have a feeling that, that she'll be back. So. Oh, I agree. I think this was definitely... This movie struck a really good note. I think it was an excellent action movie just in general. And then as a as one of the first female superhero-led movies, I think it was really, really excellent. And I like how... I really like the Steve... Uh, the Chris Pine character, Steve Trevor. I really enjoyed how he interacted with her. Now, what did you think of the directing? Because I liked it. I mean, I feel like as far as the directing, that's what struck the proper note of the the warrior versus feminine feminine person, the feminist. <laughs> you know, having having that good balance. That's probably why the movie feels the way it does. I mean, mm-hmm. the writing is one thing, the acting is mm-hmm. another thing. But I think it's because of Patty that probably we felt more of those, right. Well, and I felt like too feels. the only thing the only thing that was a little I'm not I'm not sure. I feel like DC because of what happened to the Batmans in the 90s like the later Batmans where mm-hmm. you get the bless his heart Joel Schumacher and Batman and Robin and you, they started going towards this kind of throwback of the weird colors and the very comic booky writing that they 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 want to not do that like they want to stay away from the campiness and and that kind of stuff and I'm not saying that has to be campy but I think the my main complaints of the last couple like the Batman versus Superman and Man of Steel is that like it's so gritty like it's like this is our gritty <laughs> retelling it's so dark and so ooh that it's like we are still in it's a fantasy you know it's a fantasy world and 
I think that my only criticism with just the overall is that if there were to just be a teeny bit more color, you know, and I'm not saying I get it because you're doing a throwback to like a, to like a World War One, And so you kind of want to have that sepia sort of feeling. And I get that completely. And I'm not opposed to that in general. And I do like how whenever there was color on screen, it was very much about her. Like her, she had like the bright, brighter colors and, and that's fine. But I just feel like, you know, what's the art word for it? Just a little bit, just like turn up whatever that the brightness, just a teeny little bit, because it is, you know, this isn't reality. It is a comic book movie. And it's okay if it kind of looks like a comic book movie. It doesn't have to look so real, you know? Yeah. That's just me. (laughs) I just found an article by the Daily Mail. And it says, we wouldn't have made the same choice. Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins admits her heart sank when Gail Godot was originally cast. Remember what you said in the last episode that we did about Wonder Woman, how you said Mm -hmm. she just wasn't your vision of what Wonder Woman should be. We had a kind of an idea that Wonder Mm -hmm. Woman was more Xena-esque in physique. This woman is, she's very fit and svelte, but she's more of a model kind of look. Yeah. I remember when I read in the news that Wonder Woman had been cast and my heart sank, she admitted. I had been talking to the studio for so long about doing it, and I was like, well, that's that. I'm sure we wouldn't have made the same choice. But when Jenkins started paying attention to the actress that was chosen for her, she was blown away. Frankly, I think they did a better job than I could have because I didn't know that I would have scoured the earth as hard to find her, she conceded. I don't know that I would have looked internationally. I would have just looked for an American girl. Mm -hmm. She described Gal's casting as a magical gift to her. And I Mm. think that's another thing that just made this feel so different is that it wasn't an American. She had an ethnic look and sound. And I think that Wonder Woman needs that, you know? So, but at times, you know, I thought there were scenes where it kind of reminded me of the Linda Carter Wonder Woman and Mm -hmm. just the way her hair was and in some of the scenes where she kind of tossed her hair a little bit. But it was updated. It was more realistic, I think. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I I understand. I mean, it definitely fit into the world that they created for her. So it, it, did, it did end up making sense. And I admit I saw a picture of her several, I think it was right before the, like, the Hollywood premiere. Mm-hmm. And it was a picture of her and Linda Carter, like, just in their little ball gowns or whatever they were wearing at the premiere and and they did look a lot of like like I never would have se- thought that you know seeing them separately but seeing them together I was like okay that makes me feel better somehow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that she that, that she and Linda Carter seeing them together I don't know that made me feel better I don't know why it just did and because and it's I, familiar it's familiar I was willing to go along with, with this her. yeah that's true and I was willing to go along with this anyway you know yeah but I think I feel I'm not going to take back anything I said because I did feel that way. It's kind of like the director said. I definitely did feel that way. And I and I also just didn't know where they were going to go mm-hmm. with it. So I think I've always had ever since, you know, a million years ago when they were say, talking about Joss writing a script and all of that stuff, you know, a million years ago, I had this idea of kind of a Buffy type of character, um, you know, kind of a reluctant hero who just gets stuff done and and I something a little more ironic and self-referential whereas they almost went exactly the opposite you know she's she's wise but she's also innocent and it's a fish out of water kind of story in some ways and so it it's way different it's not bad it's not bad at all it's just different than I would have that than I originally thought but since they went this way she's definitely a good choice yeah so and I did enjoy I, I, you know, we talked about this in the Wonder Woman episode we did. When she comes in and takes care of business in Batman versus Superman, that's one of the best parts of that movie. Yeah. She, she's a light at, in that movie. So mm-hmm. I think that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. The costuming, like you were saying, you were mentioning that she was always the bright, you know, wearing the bright clothing clothes. Even but- though it wasn't that bright. <laughs> Comparatively, well, like the it one was. where she was wearing, where she was in um, London with the hat and the yes. coat. 
That's beautiful. That was more dark, but she still stood out because of the, you know, the hat and the way she kind of looked and composed herself well, I, and moved and yeah. I mean, I'm not even talking about the the Wonder Woman costume. Obviously, the costume is what it is, but I'm talking about the like even obviously that is the exception. I think like the wraps that they even had, even the wrap and the and the dress she was in at the beginning of the movie b- before the flashback. Yeah, the bright it's just blue. like this yeah. bright, bright red or bright blue. And then she's in a coat of some sort right after everything happens mm-hmm. and it's a bright blue. It's that, it's more about that. That's mm-hmm. what I was thinking of. Then, and because everyone else is in very, very, very dark, drab colors. Yeah. I remember the thing I wanted to talk about was the sword and shield that she had with with the lasso. Oh, yeah. One of the things I appreciated was by the end of the movie, like, she thought she needed those things and broke into the tower on the island to to get them to take mm-hmm. with her. Mm-hmm. And she finds out towards the end of the movie that she doesn't really need them to fight Ares. She fights mm-hmm. him as herself mm-hmm. with only the lasso of truth, which I mm-hmm. love. I love mm-hmm. that because when I first saw her with the shield and the sword, and I thought, okay, that's badass, but it's not what Wonder Woman carries. Yeah, and, and in our discussion about Wonder Woman, we talked about the fact that the power of love is what she uses and and just really in the, the lasso of truth and that she doesn't kill, you know, and, and over the years that became, you know, more of what she was doing was killing and fighting and being more violent. Mm-hmm. But at the start, at the origin, she was intended to be the opposite of a male hero where she didn't right. kill. She didn't conduct herself the same way. Mm-hmm. And in that scene, it just reminded me so much of what she was meant to be, mm-hmm. how she fought and, and, and just the, the message that she had about love and fighting for love. And, and, the, and the fact that the sword just fell apart. She didn't need yeah. that. That was symbolic, too. In a way. Well, you know? because that was never the weapon. It was her. Right. It was her. The it whole was time. you all along, Dorothy. Yes. <laughs> no, I agree. I do. I agree. I like I like that it was just her. It was and and the thing is all the things that she has are just to focus her power. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really all about all about what who she is and what she is, which is very cool. Cause that's all of us, you know. Yep. Yep. Makes us feel better. <laughs> Makes us feel more more empowered makes everyone feel more empowered i think so that's very cool yeah 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 maybe I'll be she'll get interested. her her invisible jet next oh gosh <laughs> i it's, it's so funny the invisible jet that's pretty awesome anyway well i thought it was really good i definitely enjoyed it i'll definitely recommend it and i'll probably see it again i'm almost certain that i'm going to see it again in the in the movie theater before before it leaves so i am ah. too <laughs> I'll probably it'll probably steep a little bit in between and then when I see it again I'll you know I'll have different insights after seeing sure. it again, so sure but I'll have to listen to our episode again and find out <laughs> if I've what, changed what my changed? mind yeah 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 that's okay that's okay we are allowed to change our minds everybody is with new information you can make new you can form new opinions what did you guys think of the movie yeah we want to hear from you please Yes, and you can do that by emailing us at girlygeeks at gmail.com. That's girlygeeks with a Z at gmail.com. Or you can call our Google voicemail line at 432-363-4742. And of course, you can get in contact with us on Facebook and Twitter. Find all those links at anomalypodcast.com. That's A-N-O-M-A-L-Y podcast. Dot com. And we'll have the, the link to that um, episode we were talking about where we had our Wonder Woman chat, The Secret Life of Wonder Woman, which is a book by Jill Lepore that we, we um, used as our reference, and um, her origin story, and um, the creator, William Marston. Mm-hmm. Check that out. We'll have links in our show notes. And to Suicide Squad and a few other superhero movies Yay. we've re- reviewed over the years. And the Star so. Trek one since we referenced Star Trek, it. yes. We'll reference that <laughs> one as well. We'll link to it. I wanted to also thank one of our listeners. I brought the book of stamps with me to show you. Chris M. from Canada snail mailed us a commemorative Star Trek book of stamps from oh, that's Canada. that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And that was very kind <laughs> like of you. It. Thank you very much. Cool. And then we got some some voicemails and stuff. We need to do a, a yeah, that's okay. A, a listener mail um, show at some point, but okay, sounds good. Also, one other thing, um, I went to go see Pirates of the Caribbean, and I really liked it. 
Good. And I, I think I might try to do a guest cast with someone okay. else because I know you hate Kira Knightley and you've never I been really into, do. You really hate her. Well, you would I like really this do. one because she's not in it except for like the very end for a split mm-hmm. second and she says nothing. Well, the thing is, is that I've only seen the first one and because of her, I really haven't had any interest in watching the rest of them. So I would not even know what I was looking at. Well, I so. figured as much. So <laughs> <laughs> might have a couple of guests. On oh, it's intentional. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All gosh. Right. Well, that's. I'm so mean. That's the thank you for listening. For yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, don't forget to subscribe. That's right. That's right. Did I tell you? Did you see? We're also simultaneously pushing our episodes to YouTube now. Oh. When we upload to Libsyn, it automatically sends an episode to YouTube. um, I was wondering about that. I have to make special, I have to make special wide artwork for it every time. But yeah. Still. That's pretty cool, right? Very cool. I think they can do that. I know a lot of people listen or watch a lot of YouTube clips, so it might be easier for some people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I've seen other podcasters do that. So very Mm -hmm. cool. I like it. Yeah. I'm Angela. And I'm Jen. And you've been listening to the Anomaly Podcast, where female and fandom converge. Neat. 